New exclusive photographs, by far the best yet, are in from the Titanic. For most of this century, that huge passenger liner has been a dead ship, resting in an ocean grave that, until these past few days, no one had seen. Now, scientists have even seen the iceberg damage that doomed the Titanic. In a startling discovery, an old camera that seems to have documented the ill fate that happened to the Titanic has been found. Having a treasure trove of knowledge, it turns out that the pictures taken by the camera have all that's needed to piece the tragic event together. From the infancy and construction stage down to the very moment that the Titanic met its demise, these raw images offer a bone-chilling glimpse into the scrolls of history. Seat tight for a one-in-a-century photo reminiscing session as we are about to take you to the moments that truly mattered. It's not in one piece. Titanic's in a couple of pieces. Three. What happened? How did well, that happen? Well, that's always been a, a, some of the controversy. There's, you know, the Titanic legend is full of facts and misinformation as well. Number 10, the fire in the hull. Going through the collage of pictures, the very first image that we'll come across is probably one containing the most elusive detail about the Titanic, the 30-foot-long dark mark on the hull. This image was discovered by Sanan Maloney. And no, this wasn't a ship crest. Neither was it the construction company's emblem. So what was this dark mark about? It turns out that the mark was caused by a fire in the hull. Apparently, a three-story tall room which was supposed to serve as storage for the coal needed to fuel the ship's engine caught fire right before the ship set sail. You think that's bad enough? What if you were told that the crew shoved the tails of the incident right under the rug? In all totality, this was the case, and the construction company was doing it to save face in the eyes of the press. But that's not even all that's terrifying about this fire incident. It so happens to be that the exact spot bearing the imprint of the fire was the part that collided with the iceberg that brought the end of the Titanic. Fishy, right? Due to that reason, there has been yet a recent uproar as to how the Titanic got sunk by the iceberg. People are starting to divert their attention away from the iceberg and more towards the damage caused by the fire in the hull. The theory by Molony is that the damages caused by the fire must be what made the Titanic susceptible to damage. In his belief, the coal fire must have reached approximately 932 to 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature high enough to warp the steel and make it brittle. While some people share his beliefs, others believe that the several eyewitnesses and structural observations by historians rules out that fact. At the end of the day, the matter was taken to court. But it seems somehow the contradictions outweighed Molony's belief. However, we can't thank the man enough for unraveling a secret that was long buried at the bottom of the ocean. If there's one thing learned, it's the fact that there are many untold stories that amassed to bring the Titanic to its end. One might simply have to ask, was the ship cursed? We get to find out more as we go. Number 9. The iceberg that sank the Titanic. Next on the list, we come across one of the greatest villain in history of the Titanic that nature ever birthed, the iceberg. Obviously, you can tell there's no way we'd talk about the Titanic without mentioning the iceberg responsible for its fate. Luckily, it makes things easy as a few several people also caught glances of the iceberg that sank the ship. Yet one might ponder, where did this iceberg originate? According to scientists, they posit that the iceberg broke off from its colossal parent sheet on the southwest coast of Greenland. At the time of detachment, it was estimated to measure roughly one mile. Quite astonishing, isn't it? This implies that during its inception, the Titanic must have appeared no larger than a toy boat in comparison. It was only as the iceberg journeyed into warmer waters, it gradually diminished in size. While tracing the likely trajectory of the iceberg, we discovered that it traversed from Greenland to Baffin Bay and then continued its path to Davis Strait. After a considerable journey, it eventually reached the Labrador Sea before making its way into the Atlantic. You're probably thinking right now, if the iceberg was that big, wouldn't it have been easily spotted? Well, you're correct. It turns out that the crew on the Titanic had first-hand knowledge that the ice field was larger than in previous years. Additionally, ships that had encountered the ice field routinely used radio communication to alert all liners in the vicinity about the situation and impending dangers. 
One such ship was the French liner La Touraine. On April 12th, La Touraine sent a radio warning about the ice in the steamship lanes, alerting Captain Edward to the challenges ahead. However, he was too confident and cocky to take precautionary measures. It appeared that the captain had let the term unsinkable ship go to his head. While La Touraine played its part, the Dutch ship Nordam also communicated via the Coronia, warning about the large ice field approaching. However, Captain Edward had a consistent reply as he hung up each time. Thanks. Fast forward to when the Titanic started sinking, and let's just say Captain Edward wasn't feeling so thankful anymore. If only he had tackled the concerns differently, there just might have been a ray of hope for the Titanic. Number 8. Captain Edward John Smith This takes us to the man of the hour, Captain Edward John Smith. Captain Edward is someone that some will refer to as a character star right from a fiction book. Born in 1850, he wasn't just known as a ruler of the seas in the course of his careers, but he had a complete unblemished record of sailing to show that he earned his title. And what better sailor to guide the legendary Titanic other than the captain himself? In truth, Captain Edward merited the role and he was the right pick for the job. Not just that his demeanor mirrored the elegance of the Titanic in a way, more like they were meant to be, a match made heaven, some might say. However, the problem was that for this particular voyage, overconfidence took hold of him. From the outset, Captain Edward owed his crew and everyone on board a huge responsibility, and he failed all through. For one, in the initial planning stages, he was supposed to oversee the safety drill, but he wasn't present at the time. And so because of that, the traditional safety drill was ruled off. Not just that, he also had the responsibility of making the right call by making good use of the information he had received from the other ships pertaining the ice field, but he wasn't wary of the warnings. As a matter of fact, due to that sole action, his leadership and response have become subjects of intense scrutiny. People believe that a sailor who was claimed to have achieved that much must have done better. And so that questions a lot about Captain Edward. However, if there's so much as the one or several deed that attempts to erase the mistakes of the captain, it was that which he exhibited during the final hours of the Titanic. At the center of tragedy, he ensured that many made it out safely on the lifeboats. Not to mention the heroic act of how he swam across to hand over a baby to his mother. It's indeed one of the heroic tales of the Titanic, and divers were eager to commemorate the sailor. However, his body was never found. Even though the captain might have met his end with the Titanic, some believe that his ending is rather poetic fitting for a sailor of his caliber. Number 7. The Maiden Voyage of the Titanic The Titanic was finally ready to set sail. The long wait was finally over as she was set to thread on the waters and begin her life, but unknown that her first voyage would be her last. The 10th of April 1912 was a memorable day as she opened her gates and welcomed all ashore, although it would not be the first time she was on water as the ship had first traveled from Belfast to Southampton on the 2nd of that month. The vessel was constructed to carry thousands of people from the docks of Southampton through England to New York in the United States. It was truly a day to be reckoned as this trip attracted so much publicity worldwide. The ship was certified to carry 3,547 people in number, with 905 first-class passengers, 564 second-class, 1134 third-class passengers, and 944 officers and crew members. The ship was meant to go through Southampton, and the final destination was New York. Afterwards, it would be en route from New York back to Southampton's. It was indeed a well-thought-out journey. The ship was considered safe as its safety features like watertight compartments and advanced lifeboats could not be overemphasized, not forgetting the most talked about quality of being unsinkable. Still, it seems these features were, in fact, no match for the forces of nature as the ship was hit by an iceberg a few days into its voyage and sunk into the depths of the North Atlantic Ocean. So many people claim that there were, in actuality, signs that were against the sailing of the Titanic before its onset, leaving one to think that all the series of events that occurred were warning signs that were not heeded. One incident that struck the minds of many as a sign from above, even after many years, occurred on the day the ship was set to sail. 
Eyewitnesses claimed that while it was being removed from its resting position, it released a large amount of water, which caused another ship at the dock to recoil and advance towards the Titanic. The issue was resolved in no time as the Titanic was quickly on its way, sailing on the waters in all its glory and luxury. Claims that this was an obvious sign which could have saved passengers and staff from the terror that was the Titanic are still in vogue. Well, we will never know. Number 6. The Ship's Breakage Another monumental yet tragic moment in the demise of the Titanic occurred when the ship broke in two. At that fateful instant, all the onlookers who had managed to escape witnessed the merciless hands of nature, observing as the once-called unsinkable ship descended to the ocean floor, taking with it over 1,000 people who remained on board. At the time, it was safe to say that the survivors had their lives flash right before their eyes. One prevailing theory suggests that if the Titanic could have held on for just a few more minutes, the narrative might have unfolded differently. As accurate as that sounds, unfortunately, that's not how the events transpired. Several factors contributed to the breakage of the Titanic. One key factor was the uneven distribution of weight in the stern. Following the collision, it didn't take long for seawater to flood the compartments in the lower deck, increasing the weight and causing the entire ship to tilt at an angle. This shift in balance was what made the colossal 52,000-ton vessel vulnerable. However, that's not the sole contributor. The stress exerted on the ship's length played a role in its eventual breakage. With a length of 882 feet, the hull was prone to stress that eventually led to the ship breaking in two. Yet, the story doesn't end there. While the substantial amount of water the ship took in was significant, it alone wouldn't typically be enough to break a modern ship in two. This raises questions about the ship's design, suggesting potential flaws not just in structural integrity, but also in the quality of materials used. Substandard materials may have been a crucial factor in the ship's ultimate demise, adding another layer to the tragedy. A recent theory suggests that the fire burning in the hull may have played a role. It is believed that the prolonged fire not only damaged the hull, but also made it more susceptible to breaking apart. And so this multifaceted combination of factors paints a complex picture of the Titanic's final minutes. Number 5. Eyewitness Account The Titanic story leaves a trail of tragedy, sadness, and even tears for anyone who has heard of it. But how then is it to the one who experienced it, who felt the magnificent, unsinkable ship hit the iceberg and watched in horror as it sank to the depths of the ocean while water flooded its compartment? watching how passengers and staff alike scurry around for safety. The letter of Dr. Washington Dodge is one of the significant accounts describing the Titanic. The manner of his writing shows just how he must have felt from the life-changing experience. He was a first-class passenger who had boarded the ship at Southampton's with his wife and seven-year-old son. In his letter, he stated that everyone had retired to their beds, and at exactly 11.14, the disaster occurred with the ship first colliding with the iceberg. This sound woke him and his wife up, and he went down to find out what had happened. Upon getting down, he was reassured to head back upstairs that all was well, and there was, in fact, no danger at all. It was upon coming down the second time that he realized that the ship had begun to sink as water rushed to several compartments all at once. Still, all passengers were reassured and the crew members were asked to operate the boats. They then began to lower passengers into the vast oceans, taking into consideration that women and children were to be lowered first before men. He added that he saw his wife and son placed in boat number five, and he wondered if he was saving them or exposing them to further harm. After much panic and waiting, he was finally lowered into boat number 11 with some other men. Dr. Washington spoke about the bias and mismanagement of the situation and also insisted that most of the lifeboats were half-filled and could have contained more people. All this leaves room for the imagination that if proper arrangements were put in place and the situation was managed more efficiently as promised, many lives would have been saved that day. Number 4. The Construction of the Ship the construction of the RMS Titanic, fondly called the Ship of Dreams before it quickly became a nightmare, began on the 31st of March 1909 in Belfast, Ireland. The construction project was handled by Harland and Wolfe, and the owners of the Ship White Star Lines ensured that the ship was built to perfection. 
Engineers, designers, and artisans from all walks of life were involved in putting their ideas together to ensure that all works were done right. With over three million pounds available, White Star Line spared no funds in creating the ship. Its length, size, and breadth leave none to the imagination that the ship was indeed a magnificent symbol of maritime engineering. No wonder why it was thought to be unsinkable, given its immense size and avant-garde engineering. But even the best thought-out plans can go amiss, and this was beyond question the case of the Titanic. It's fascinating to consider how the ship's name came to be associated with its catastrophic end. It was assumed the ship was doomed because the owners had been previously renowned for being associated with some shipwrecks. The other two ships with whom the Titanic belonged to an Olympic-class ocean liner had all been reported to have met their gruesome end. However, that of the Titanic was more popular due to the publicity behind its construction. Some others presumed that the Titanic had been cursed right from the genesis of its creation, as it was believed that it carried an unexplainable aura of death, as it had been reported that eight construction workers lost their lives due to unknown accidents during construction. The ship had also been claiming lives for two years, even before it had even sailed. Some insisted that the Titanic was built by a company named after a curse Greek legend, which also attributed to its doom. However, was the Titanic cursed or just caught in a series of unfortunate events? Number 3. The Lifeboats of the Titanic As the gigantic ship sank into the depths of the North Atlantic Ocean, the lifeboats were the only source of escape, and one might stop and wonder if there were more lifeboats on deck. Maybe the story of the Titanic would have been one with a historic happy ending. It is unbelievable that a ship as large as the Titanic, built to accommodate thousands of people, was equipped with only 20 lifeboats on deck, and only 18 were being used to convey survivors that day. Could the White Star Line have taken the unsinkable feature they attributed to the ship too seriously? Or could the revelation that the White Star Line wanted a few lifeboats on the ship to make it look more aesthetically pleasing be true? According to sources, in the advent of an emergency, the ship was designed to float much longer. But judging from what occurred, this didn't go as planned. The loading of passengers began at 11.45 p.m. and ended at 2.05 a.m. with 18 lifeboats in use, conveying women and children first before carrying the men. It was discovered that the lifeboats were not filled to their full capacity, as each lifeboat could accommodate up to 1,178 people, approximately a third of the total number that boarded the ship. Although there are variable reasons for this, the main reason is unknown. It was also discovered that lifeboats failed to return to carry some of the other drowning passengers still on deck. While officials insist that it was due to fright of the pressure of the sinking ship and the swamping of drowning victims, these reasons appear rather intangible. All lives could have been saved that day. Although the ship was cleared for safety protocols at that time, as it was discovered that it carried the required number of lifeboats, few on the deck gave an avenue for blame. It is now clear that the Titanic and all her victims suffered not only from negligence from its creator, but also from the unruly, outdated safety protocols. Number 2. The Discovery of the Titanic Wreck After the enigma of the Titanic, it seemed like the ship had vanished into thin air, as it took years unending before its wreck was salvaged. The wrecks were found in the second half of the 20th century after much effort had been made to do so for years. Robert Ballard, in August of 1985, was able to persuade the French and Americans to work together, and it was due to this combined work that the wrecks were finally found laying in halves at the bottom of the sea where it sat on Newfoundland and Labrador, 350 miles off the coast of Canada. The ship had been found to have deteriorated, which was expected due to the corrosion attributed to the presence of salt water. Many have wondered if the debris of the remains of victims was discovered. While this is still an unproven fact, other objects that have been discovered to be the properties of victims, including shoes, suitcases, bottles of wine, etc., were found. One might stop and wonder how a ship declared missing for many years was eventually found. It was all attributed to technology. A camera designed for large area imaging of the ocean depths, called the Agro, was used. Its first scientific attempt to locate the Titanic wreck was successful as it returned in December of 1985, 
after spotting the Titanic. It was an eureka in the world of science, as it proved that the ocean's depth could now be studied from above easily. Even though the wreck has been found, it has proven impossible to pull it to the surface as its remains appear too fragile to be moved from the ocean floor. Certainly the story of the Titanic, though told by many, will remain a mystery buried 12,500 feet in the depths of the ocean. Number 1. First Ever Full-Sized View of the Shipwreck As a bonus to this mind-blowing journey, the first ever full-sized view of the Titanic's shipwreck has been uncovered. Thankfully, this was pretty easy owing to the fact that the bow of the ship was easily recognizable as the divers dived in. Then again, knowing what had transpired with the Titanic, you might be a little puzzled as to how the term full-sized view comes into play. Well, it's not that the divers pieced the ship together or anything. It's completely far from that. Instead, deep-sea mapping technology was adopted to create a 3D realistic view of what the ship must have looked like without the water. The aim of this endeavor is to help engineers learn several details about all that unfolded that night and the major cause of what happened. Ever since the wreck was found in 1985, there have been a lot of questions that still remain unanswered. The aim is so that marine engineering will further advance and the event of the century will truly be deciphered once and for all. Thanks for diving into the intriguing world of the Titanic's hidden history. Subscribe for more captivating discoveries, and let's continue exploring the mysteries lurking beneath the ocean's depths together.